If you've never built a house or even consider building a house or houses, then there's one area that you could quite easily overlook. When we sit in our houses and it rains outside, do we ever actually give any consideration to what happens to that rain water? It falls on a roof, goes into the gutters, providing the gutters are not blocked, and down the drain pipes and disappears somewhere. The water in our driveway similarly disappears somewhere. And the water on the road, well, there's drains on the road so we can visually see what happens to that water. But as somebody who's going to do a development, whether that is a self-build or for a larger development as a property developer, you need to take into consideration what happens to that rainwater. And not doing so can have severe financial and time, time implications uh, when you come to submit a planning proposal. So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, what happens to that rainwater. We're going to talk about the financial implications. And I'm also going to talk about a case study where this became very much a reality and delayed uh, a planning application that I put in very significantly. Hi. My name is Jim J. Davidson and I'm a property developer. I first got involved in property in 1973 at the age of 16 when my brother and I purchased a flat in the student area of Edinburgh. My current company, Fineside Developments, was established in 2003 and we completed our first new build in 2006. This channel is really dedicated to providing you some of the things that I have learned along the way. I'm not an expert. I don't profess to know everything, but what I do know, I hope will help you on your property journey. For context, we are in the find it phase and the detail stage. So when it rains, there's a large volume of water that is produced. Now, if it's a particularly heavy shower, you will sometimes see that collecting perhaps in your garden but eventually it seems to soak away. But it doesn't just soak away into the ground. There's actually a management process to handle that water that the developer of the house that you live in had to put in place. And so you as a developer, when you come to actually build a house or houses, you've got to think about what are you going to do with that water. Now in this very simplest um, area would be to simply connect to your pipes um, that come down the drain water, down the drain pipe, should I say, um, into uh, a, 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 an infrastructure that then leads into a soak away. The soak away could just simply be a big pit that you then fill with rubble. Uh, the rubble to create the stability, but it's a place for the water to go. So rather than it trying to seep into the earth, which it wouldn't because it would just rise to the surface, this gives it somewhere for the water to stay while it then soaks into the water table. So it just delays that process, or when I say delays that process, it, slow, it helps slow down that process so that you don't end up with very, very soggy ground for a long period of time. So what happens in a situation where you have a high water table or impervious soil? Then before the council will give you uh, permission, they're going to want to see that the water soaks away fast enough. And that requires a, a percolation test. And so you can carry out a percolation test by, first of all, digging a hole in the ground. And the, ground, and the hole should be a square hole, and it should be 300 by 300 millimeters. So here we have uh, the, the hole in the ground and it needs to be 300 below the invert level. And the invert level is, is the point of where the sewage would come into the ground. Uh, and so therefore what you do is you dig that hole and then you fill it with water and the water needs to disappear, in other words, soak away within six to 12 hours. And if it hasn't drained away, 
then the percolation test has failed and you now need to look at alternatives of how you're going to dispose of that surface water. We're not finished with the video yet, but I just wanted to point out to you a valuable resource, um, which I'm bringing up on the screen now. It is the plot checklist, and this has got many things there that you should be checking out when you are looking for a site, whether that's for one house or multiple houses. These are essential things that you need to be checking out to ensure that you don't incur any cost implications. Uh, there is in the description below a link to the checklist so you can simply get access it there and I think you will find this a valuable resource. Now let's get back to the main video. So you might be thinking well we can just put the water into the sewer but actually it's very unlikely that the local water authority will allow you to do that and part of the reason for that is it would just overwhelm their systems so they don't actually have the infrastructure to be able to deal with it. It used to be able to happen at one time they would allow you to do that but as we add more and more houses to this very small island that we live on um, it becomes that much more difficult and so therefore only in very very rare circumstances will they allow you to do this. And so another way that you may mitigate this is by having a large holding tank. So this would be essentially underneath the ground. Um, so you have your ground here and you have these uh, sort of like they're cages um, so they're, they're essentially a void area and you might have several of these depending on what the actual uh, rate of water moving into the, the, the ground, into the water table is. So the, the, the slower that process is, the more that you're going to have to have these cages. And so when it rains, the water goes into these cages and then this allows a much longer period for the water to eventually soak away. However, that may not be uh, a way that you can do it. And so therefore, uh, another way that you might be able to mitigate this is if there is uh, perhaps a, a stream somewhere um, fairly near to the site. Uh, or a burn as we would call it in Scotland, um, then if your houses are here, you may be able to connect the, them to, to that particular outlet or in fact to a pond or somewhere like that where there's natural water supply. However, again, it would depend on the rate of water, uh, whether that's going to be practical. So, so you don't want to, like in a large development, just simply shift um, a problem from here to over here, which would then potentially flood the land that is around uh, uh, this stream. So again, it really is a case by case situation. And you're certainly going to have to get an engineer involved in order to come up with a plan. Uh, but essentially what you're trying to do at, at this stage is just simply uh, you're looking at the viability of the site and so therefore you want to know the potential cost implications that you might have for this particular site and whether it's worth actually moving ahead with it or maybe looking for another site. Now another another way that you can do this is uh, that you can um, take your house and uh, you can then have um, basically a, a rainwater harvesting system. So again, this is a case of the water that comes off the roof goes into a tank and then you use it um, in your house uh, to like flush toilets. You can't use it for like showers, you can't use it for um, like your kitchen, but you can use it like in your toilets. You can use it in an outside tap to water your garden. So you can use it that way and that helps then get rid of that water that is sitting there. So then let's uh, have a look at the test case that I was referring to. So uh, we had a piece of land here and a rectangular piece of land and we're looking to build two houses on here. Uh, this is not to proportion, uh, but essentially you get the idea. There's two houses going in here. Um, on the corner of this property here, there was a small structure um, that had a roof and the, the water that came off the roof then fed in 
to the public sewer. And so therefore, uh, this was obviously a historical um, situation where it had been allowed for the water to go in the sewer. And as I've already said, they're not very keen on you doing that. And so what we wanted to do was to say, okay, so we're already putting water into the sewer. If we can get these two houses to, uh, to basically uh, send no more than the existing amount of water into the sewer at the rate it is currently going in, then would they allow this? And so, so essentially what we're saying is we're not going to have any further impact by connecting to the sewer. Um, the problem was that, uh, that we needed to therefore slow down the water. Oh, first of all, why did we need to do this? Well, because there is actually clay fairly close to the surface um, of the, uh, the, the surface ground. And so therefore, uh, it wasn't going to soak away uh, by just simply uh, uh, digging a pit and having somewhere for the water to go. So we, it was going to basically stay fairly close to the ground. So we needed to be able to dispose of this water off site. And so uh, what we were going to do was we we're going to slow down the, the, from, from the time that the water collected off the roofs and, and off the surface uh, we were going to put in some mitigation issues and basically like these cages that we talked about underneath the ground and then slowly allow the water uh, to go into this unit here and then flow out um, into the sewer. Um, they, they didn't like that idea. Um, they clearly wanted, to, they wanted rid of this, this idea. They didn't want it going into their existing. And so we then uh, looked at uh, rain harvesting, as I've talked about before, uh, and we looked at various other issues. And we basically discounted every reason um, why we still had to do this. And it seemed to be going okay. They seemed to be accepting it. In fact, the person dealing with it in, the, in uh, Scottish Water, as it was, the Water Authority, had more or less accepted it, said they're gonna send it upstairs, get a rubber stamp, and it should be okay. However, upstairs didn't rubber stamp it. They sent it back and they said, actually, there's a burn over here, and we think that you should be able to connect to that. Now, the problem was that right behind this was a park. And we thought, okay, this will be a public park uh, because there's, you know, there's obviously a play area. Uh, but it wasn't. As it turned out, uh, it was owned by a local farmer. Um, and then just here, coming down here, there's a track. This is, again, not to proportion. Um, and this was it, was, it was a road officially, but it wasn't a road. In other words, it didn't have tarmac. It was, a, it was pretty much a dirt track. Um, but this was owned by the council. This piece of land was owned by the council. Uh, and so, therefore, what we had to do is we had to get permission to go across the field. We had to get permission to go across uh, the council's uh, land here. And, and then we had to uh, put the water into, uh, into this uh, stream or burn, um, as we would refer to it. And so we did get permission from the farmer. We did get permission there, and we were able to come up with that. Um, it took them a long time to agree to it. Uh, this was uh, in the September, um, and by this time we were actually a year into this planning application, and so uh, and they had pretty much agreed on it. Um, and then they they just sat on it and sat on it for like five months. Um, they eventually came back to us and said, actually, we've changed our whole process. You'll need to resubmit everything again, which we did. Um, and they, they then they accepted that. Um, it came back, we got the authority, and then the council came back to us and said, uh, we need further proof of these calculations. And so we then had to resubmit that. And that has all been delays. And at this point, we still have not got the planning um, permission on here and we've been into this uh, since uh, September was the initial application went in September 2019 so as you can see this can have a significant effect on your development and so it's something you really need to check out at the beginning and uh, so uh, don't take these things lightly because it's again something that people just generally don't think about and it can have as you can see a significant impact on your development.
If you are new to the channel, then we would love you to subscribe and have a look around. There's stacks of videos now. We're over to over 70 videos and plenty more on the way. So please do that. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. It always helps with our algorithm and pushes us up the YouTube, YouTube rankings, should I say. And uh, until the next time, I look forward to seeing you. Oh, and if you haven't joined our membership site, uh, it's growing. I would love to see you there. And again, the content on there will expand over the next year um, and become hopefully a valuable resource to you. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos. Then click to watch the next video. Please remember to visit our website at builditandprosper.com to get our app or click on the button on the YouTube header if you're on desktop.